Are you brave? No. What kind of people strap themselves into these man-made machines of torture? Just pay the price, get locked in, and you're off. Hey guys, I'm Maverick and welcome to my YouTube channel, Maverick's Paint. You might know me from my Dead Space Marine series or my Instagram page where I do short video tutorials. Full disclosure guys, I'm very new to YouTube so bear with me while I try to figure all of this out. Grimdark is the reason I was drawn to Warhammer. It's like a science fiction horror movie where you don't know who to cheer for. In today's video, I want to show you guys how I paint Grimdark. Imperial Fists have always been my favorite legion. Because of how bright their armor is, when you add things like battle damage, blood, or dirt, it shows up really well. So without further ado, let's get to it. A quick tip for anyone wanting to paint Imperial Fists, pick up a can of red primer. Yellow is a brutal color that's way easier to work with over a red base than a black or gray one. Here I'm just going over the model with some white paint to pick out the areas I want to be the brightest. If you own an airbrush, Tamiya paint is legit. It's probably the smoothest paint I've ever worked with. Another good tip is to look into using oil paints instead of washes. They do the same job by darkening the recesses, but the difference is that if you screw up, oil paints wipe right off. For cleanup, I got this big bag of makeup sponges from the dollar store. 20 of these bad boys for like 2 bucks. Here's where the magic happens. My good friend El Miniaturista on Instagram showed me this technique and it works like a charm. I cover the model in Vallejo transparent paint. If you want to use Citadel, their yellow contrast will work just as good. I decided I want to put a Templar cross on one of the shoulder pads like Sigismund. He is easily one of the most badass characters in Warhammer, so it was a no-brainer. Our marine is going to start to take some shape now. I painted the sword, gun, and all the rubber areas on the legs and arms black. Brown for the leather and metal for the chain teeth, gun mag, and parts of the backpack. I used Nuln Oil and Egg Racks to bring back the details on the metal parts and it also ages them a bit. I've been asked a few times on how to edge highlight. Honestly, it all comes down to the angle of the brush. You want to use the side of the brush and drag it along the edge, and in order to do so, you might need to reposition the model or hold it upside down to get the right shot at it. Also, make sure your brush doesn't have too much paint on it. We want to keep these lines crisp. Oh yeah, you may have noticed I cheated with my hazard stripes. The Mighty Brush sent me these awesome transfers and they saved me a lot of time definitely worth checking out. Alright guys, this is where we separate the boys from the men, the box art from the grimdark. Nah, I'm just kidding, but in all seriousness, this is where we break in our armor and add a few hundred years of war. One of the best tools for chipping is packing foam. It creates these super small specks of paint that look to scale with our model. If you want to go the extra mile, use a color lighter than your armor and place it under some of the chips and scratches. This gives it a three-dimensional appearance. For fresher damage, I add some silver to areas that would get damaged often.
Our Marine looks like he's been in a few fights, but now it's time to add a few hundred years. I know some of you are dying inside right now, but trust me. I cover the Marine head to toe in AK streaking grime and let it dry for about 30 minutes. Once it's dry, I use their white spirit to dilute the grime and manipulate how dark or light I want it to be. If you put too much on or you don't like how it looks, just dilute the grime, then use a dry brush to wick the solution away. This gives the Marine a more muggy feel, like he's been stuck on some planet fighting for years now. Finally, it wouldn't really be a model of mine without some blood. Using an old brush, I dab some traitor blood onto the sword. Next, I use my airbrush to blow paint off of the brush and onto the model for some splatter effect. You can do this by dragging a toothpick across the bristles of an old brush as well. All right, here's a cool trick I learned a while back. If you have any of those old flyer bases kicking around, heat it up over a candle and gently pull it apart. Remove from the heat and it'll harden really quick. With these thin strips of plastic, we can use them to make some awesome effects. I'm gonna glue a couple to my sword to make it look like blood is flying off while he sprints. Before we see the final product, a huge shout out to my new Patreon supporters. The Adeptus Kiwi, JSB, Hey Don RG Gingrick, Gingrick? Jonas Hansen, Jared Two, Devin M. Thank you so much for your support, guys. It means the world to me. And there you have it, guys. This Imperial Fist looks like he's been ruining a chain of Separatist planets. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, keep it grimdark.